My name is Dakota, and I am a bookaholic. Whenever that means. I wanted to do a sit down chatty kind of video and I didn't know what to do it about. And then in my, in my endeavors, in my internet endeavors, I came across this thing called a bookholics anonymous tag. And people were talking about why they love buying books so much and why they love books so much and what they love about books so much. And you know, I have a lot that I can say about this topic as an avid book lover and buyer and reader and all of those things that go along with books. This sounds like a whole bunch of jargon, doesn't it? <laughs> Basically, I've never done a book tag before. I've never done a book tag before and I want to do a book tag. It looks like so much fun, guys. You guys are having so much fun without me. Please, can I play? Can I play too? <laughs> so I've decided to make my entrance into the book tag world with this book tag called Bookaholics Anonymous. I don't know who the original creator is. I did do some research and try to track it back, but everyone kept on tagging the person before them, as is the rule, I believe. I'm not gonna tag anyone, no one tagged me, I'm just- I'm just playing. Um, guys, can I play, please? In school, I used to suck at sports. Shock horror there, wow, everyone's surprised. Bet you thought I was a real athlete. I used to suck at sports. I was always a dancer, I could do ballet and all those wonderful things. I was very flexible, but I could not catch a ball. Still could not. Could not catch a ball, could not throw a ball. None of that, not for me. No depth perception whatsoever, no proprioception, all those words for why I can't throw and catch balls. So whenever my friends were playing ball sports, I'd have to really jump in and include myself because nobody would want me on their team. And I wonder why. I wonder why. I really do wonder why. I mean, hey, I was the character hire. Uh, needless to say, I spent most of sports classes and lunches where my friends were playing football, sat on the side reading a book. Back to the book tag. The first question that we have here is, what do you like about buying books? What do I like about buying books? Well, you see, the main thing that I like about buying books is the premise that I will then get to read said book. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, I suppose it is. It is uh, a dopamine rush, that, that innocent dopamine hit when I have a book, a brand new book that I can take home, smell the pages of. I get immense joy. If you're not new here, you will know that I get immense joy from smelling books. I think there's a few hauls that I've posted or TBR lists that I've posted where I've just rated the books purely by smell. So to answer the question, what do you like most about buying books? It would be reading the books. The second question is how often do you buy books? Well, you see, uh, definitely at least once a week, but I read a lot. And I don't buy them just to look at them, I buy them to interact with them and see the nature of my career as well is I'm in with all the publishing houses and they send me a lot of books as well so I don't have to buy that many books anymore unless it's a hard to find edition or something vintage or something that I thrift or something that I just walk past and think I want that right now. Uh, so I, if we separate the question into how often do you buy books versus how often do you get books, different answer but absolutely more than once a week but I do read multiple books a week, generally speaking. So it does even out. It doesn't, it really doesn't. I'm lying to myself and you. <laughs> Pause to talk about this video's wonderful sponsor. You know who it is. Today we're talking about Squarespace. I'm gonna do the bit where I call, call them in. Ring, ring. <gasps> Who's that? Squarespace? <laughs> If you are a writer or artist of any medium, which I bet you are because you're a part of my community, I am launching a literary and arts journal slash not-so-secret cult via Squarespace, where I provide a monthly prompt and you can create something based on that prompt and submit it, and I curate a lovely little world of art for you and others to consume. I crafted slash am still crafting this platform myself and it is quite involved, but luckily for me I'm partnering with Squarespace to bring it to you. Squarespace just makes the whole process of building a website so seamless and, dare I say, enjoyable. And I love Squarespace for turning passion projects into professional projects and morphing dreams and concepts into tangible realities. And this is just done so simply by the fluid engine design system and elements that I can eventually play with, like email campaigns and an online store. You can check out the collective at nowheregirlcollective.com and make yourself familiar until submissions open. And in the meantime, you can head to squarespace.com slash Dakota Warren for 10% off your first purchase if you want to build your own website or passion project too. Bookstore or online book shopping, which do you prefer? 
absolutely bookstore because some of the books that I read, some of the best books that I read, some of the best books that I've ever read have been completely random purchases based on cover, based on staff picks, based on exposure. If there is a book by the checkout when I'm buying another book, I will pick that up and I will read the blurb and I'll probably take it home because I have an addiction, lo and behold, the title of this book tag and video. I don't really shop for books online all too often because I'm lucky to live in the epicenter of books. There are so many bookstores here, both new and secondhand, and so I'm, I'm at those frequently. Which I believe leads us to the next question, and that says, do you have a favorite bookshop? Boy, you better get your pen and paper out right now. I have multiple locations because you see I live in London now, but I did not always live in London and I've traveled various places. So I'm gonna give you some recommendations for London and for Melbourne and for various traveling places, bookstores that I've happened across and adore. Let's start with London. I mean, I'm a sucker for the big foils on Charing Cross Road because it's just, it's like six levels of books. It's the bookstore that I go to when I need something and know it will have it. It's got everything and more. I could spend hours in the art section. It's incredible, I recommend. Also the cafe on the fifth floor. I spend way too much time and money there because you can buy a book, then you can just go sit upstairs with a little treat and read the book. How wonderful is that? I'm a sucker for that. What else? The Daunt Books in Marlebone is obviously wonderful. Everyone knows that because it's a beautiful one. It's a, it's a very pretty photographable one. So I always recommend that one to people who aren't from London and say, give me a beautiful bookstore for London. I say, you'll like, you'll like the Daunt Books in Marlebone. I like the curation at Treadwells in Bloomsbury, I believe, but that's an occultist bookstore. So if you're not into occultist literature, then it won't mean anything to you, but I like the curation there. It's got lots of fun books and interesting history books there as well. Uh, book Bar in Arsenal, they throw very fun events. Good curation there as well, very good curation. And sometimes they have little cocktail parties and it's really nice. It's just a good vibe there. They're all new bookstores, but for secondhand bookstores, I love any amount of books. I think it's called, and I'm pretty sure it's in Soho somewhere, near Soho, somewhere super central. It's really good. It's got a basement with just all of these books. Again, a great curation. Recommend that very much. There's so many more I could keep going, but let's move back to Melbourne now. In Melbourne, I liked Metropolis. That's a good one. That's on, it's in, it's in the CBD, so I'm pretty sure. I think it's on Swanson Street. I don't even remember. It's been so long. Uh, it's upstairs somewhere above a bar and it's just a great curation, incredible curation. Half of my favorite books from 2020, I found on their staff recommendation table. So trust what they say. One of my favorite books, which I talk about frequently, Camilla by Sheridan Le Fanu, I found because it was their book club pick of the month. And I thought, hey, why not join this? Didn't join it, just read the book. <laughs> and I have them to thank for that book, changing my taste in literature or morphing it or shaping it very much. I think the big, the big, uh, what's it called? Oh my goodness. The big Dimmicks in the central business district as well. I'm pretty sure that's off. Is it Burke Street maybe? I don't know, but there's a giant Dimmix and it's all this big basement full of brand new books. It's got a pretty good curation. That's like my version of the Foils and Charing Crossroad, but for Melbourne. Now onto around the big beautiful world. Of course, I'm going to have to say Toppings & Co in Edinburgh. That is such a good book. So I've been there multiple times now. Every time in Edinburgh, I make, I make sure I have time to go to Toppings & Co because also their curation is wonderful and Sure, they're still big and has fun things, but their poetry selection is incredible. I found some really interesting stuff that I've not seen stocked in any other bookstores in Toppings & Co. I recommend that very much for their poetry selection. Of course, Shakespeare & Co. You knew I was going to say it, I have to say it. There's one in Paris and Vienna, and they're both wonderful. They're both very picturesque, very beautiful, great curation. Let's leave it at that, otherwise I won't shut up because I obviously go to so many bookstores and have so many recommendations. If you want a whole separate video on this, I can do it. But is it of interest? The next question is, do you pre-order books? Do I pre-order books? Well, see, prior to 
being at this point in my career, absolutely. If it was an author or poet I loved, I would pre-order just to support them more than anything as someone who was also trying to make it. Pre-orders do a lot. Pre-orders are absolutely very wonderful for any author, writer, poet creating a book, whether it's through an agency or whether it's self-published, it helps a lot. Pre-orders are wonderful. So if someone that you know or love or just want to support in general is doing a pre-order thing, pre-order their book. It helps so much. So I used to do it, but now in the portion of my career that I'm in, I'm very lucky that I just get sent pre-orders. I uh, don't have to ask for them really. They just get, they just arrive at my doorstep. I am very selective with what books I take through. I think when I first came into this, I was very excited and took every book, but now I'm very selective. I let uh, publishing houses know my taste and what to send and what not to send. I don't take fantasy. There, I said it. I don't take fantasy. <laughs> Do you have a monthly buying limit? No. I probably should, but no. I mean, no, I don't. It's not, I don't over consume books. I'm not someone who just goes out and buys and buys and buys and buys books. I buy what I'm interested in reading at the time because I'm a mood reader. And so when I'm going down a particular rabbit hole for an interest, I'll, I'll go out and buy books that inform that interest and that kind of thing. I don't set up strict TBRs. It's all based on mood and wants rather than needs. How big is your wish list? Well, my wish list is entirely books that are hard to find because, see, I when I want something, when I want a book, I will get it for myself because that's my little treat. I mean, I do have books jotted down that people have recommended me and everything, but my wish list is more so things that I can't find or things that are very important to me that I want to find, such as vintage editions or such as books that aren't published, aren't in publication anymore, rare editions, that kind of thing, books that I can't track down for the life of me, but have been trying to track down for quite a while. But I mean, they're not, I don't, not tracking down first editions or anything. I mean, what would I do with that? I appreciate the beauty of a first edition, but why would I spend thousands of pounds on a book that I probably can't touch or read because it's so fragile and wonderful? I appreciate that so much. I'm just not the kind of person that can be trusted with that kind of responsibility. The book that's on top of my wish list at the moment is Andy Warhol's cookbook. He created a bunch of cookbooks. I'm pretty sure in the early 60s, a bunch of cookbooks. Not that many. When I say a bunch, I don't mean a whole bunch. I mean a small bunch. And they're absurd. They're absolutely absurd. They're, they're cookbooks, made up recipes, just silly little things with his drawings when he was a commercial artist. and. I want to get my hands on a copy so bad and I've been trying to track one down. I found one for like 80 quid from Oxfam, but someone bought it by the time I got to the Oxfam. Ugh, I bite my thumb at the... But that's on top of my wish list at the moment. If you know where one is in England, send it to me. Do not buy it because I'll kill you now that I've... <laughs> I'm threatening, I'm threatening you. Now that I've told you the, the thing that I currently want most in the literary world, I'm threatening you if you get it instead of me. It's on site. This, the next question and final question is what attracts you to a book? The cover, the blurb, or a recommendation from others? Well, all of the above. All of the above, because they all kind of go hand in hand. But if I'm at a bookstore, I'm cover shopping. Absolutely, a beautiful cover. Of course, I'm going to pick it up and read the blurb. So much more inclined to read the beautiful blurb of a beautiful book. Uh, recommendations from others are very important to me. I take recommendations very seriously, especially from people who watch my videos. There's a few names in the comments that I recognize who give really good recommendations. And when some of you comment re recommendations for me, I'm running to the bookstore and picking them up. I've, had, I've read some of the best books that I've ever read because of some of you. I don't take recommendations seriously from people who I've just met, however, because they, how are they meant to know your taste? I've had a lot of people say, oh, you would absolutely love this book. And I think to myself, didn't like that one. I read that one, but thank you. I was at a proof party recently and I was discussing my taste in literature with somebody who I just met. Lovely person, wonderful person. And she recommended me uh, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors, Mellors, that book. And I thought to myself, you do not know what my taste in literature is if you're recommending me that. I understand, on paper, sure, on paper, 
messy adulthood. Of course, yes, of course. Okay, I get it. But I DNF'd that book halfway through because it was so millennial cringe. I couldn't do it. I feel incomplete having filmed a video about books and not having shown any books. And so I'm going to add my own final last question. And that is, what are you currently reading? Let me find it. Hang on, I'm gonna... <laughs> Current read reveal in three, two, drum roll, please. I'm reading Widow Basquiat by Jennifer Clement. It's a memoir of Basquiat's lover. Basquiat is an artist, was an artist from the 80s. He died, he died of a drug overdose. He was one of the most influential artists of the time ever, if you ask me. I am a big Basquiat fan. I think that he was absolutely wonderful what he was doing and his vision and he was a genius the way his mind worked and this book gave such an incredible look into that. I recommend this so much. I'm almost finished and I have a feeling I'm going to be really sad when I finish it. I'll update you. And that is the book tag done. If you know the original creator, please put them in the comments and I'll pin the comment. Uh, but I couldn't find it. I'm so sorry. And if you do this challenge, Yay, have fun! You don't have to tag me, I don't really care that much. But tag the original creator if we find them. We're on a hunt. We're on a manhunt. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for my first ever book tag. And tell me what you're currently reading as well. I always like to know what you're currently reading. In saying that, all of that, I love you. And I'm so hungry. I'm gonna go have lunch. I love you lots and lots and lots. Bye-bye.